my name is anita makhriya and i'm the founder and ceo of shubhkamnai events and experiences we are into the business of creating mesmerizing experiences and celebrating your happiness we are a team of young enthusiasts who believe that every event is supposed to be a mesmerizing experience for our clients and how do we achieve this by uh, by blending innovations with traditions as well as combining style with elegance we cater to three verticals of event management that is social events which includes weddings destination weddings theme stories and um, it includes um, uh, milestone celebrations we do corporate events which include team building activities product launches etc and btl activations with our office um being in bangalore hyderabad pune and chennai we cater to pan india requirements and yes uh, we look forward to doing a lot of destination weddings across the globe uh since most of you here are budding uh, event planners or entrepreneurs into the event management field i would like to just share a piece of um, uh my interest towards events or what brought me into events to all of you events is something which you know uh needs a lot of passion you need to be very passionate about what you do that holds good for any field or uh, that you're taking forward uh, which you're going to choose or which you're looking forward to be a part of but uh of course when it comes to event management um it is very much different because somebody's special days are dependent on you uh it involves a lot of odd working hours it involves a lot of stress it involves a lot of planning being on the toes always coming up with ideas coming being creative always having a backup plan ready in case something doesn't work are you able to make arrangements because remember that whether it is a social event or a corporate event or a marketing activity no matter what you do it is somebody else's goal and objective that you are going to cater to so you actually are going to live many dreams at once so um having said that um it gives me a kick this kind of a stress this kind of a pressure this kind of uh, being a part of everybody's happiness that is what gives me a kick and that is why i'm here into the event industry so um having said that you all are very lucky that you all have platforms where you can uh, lay, uh, learn through um, books and uh, through various other channels and sources as well as uh, get some from our experiences as well today we are going to talk about strategic planning the steps involved in it and um, how what is the way forward here we all know that plans are nothing it is planning that is everything and if you fail to plan then you are planning to fail okay so just ponder over it and you will understand what i mean in the remaining part of the session this is an extended uh, extension of our previous session in our previous session we had learned about what is event planning what is the process in event planning what are the departmental coordinations and uh, what is what can be done what are the various departments that uh, need coordination in the planning processes today we dive deep into something called strategic planning or building of strategies or your planning process and what are the steps involved in a strategic planning what are the challenges that may we, that we may face what are we concluding uh, with at the end of the session okay there are lots of terms which will come of uh, value to you i strongly recommend that you carry your pen and paper make notes as i speak uh, it could be of great help and great value to you at the end of the session uh, i hope you're always ready if not i'll just take just say 10 seconds quickly grab your pen and papers be prepared yes would you actually get into a car if you don't know where you're going how much sense does it make yes at times we do have plans where you know uh, we just make random plans with our friends or we just want to go out somewhere we just take the car but somewhere at the back of the mind you know that you want to go to a restaurant or you want to go for a long drive or whether you want to go to a friend's house or to a relative's place or you want to just hang around somewhere so why get into a car when you don't know where you're going the car, you have to take the car to the place where you want to go 
this is what actually is uh, event planning process of strategic planning all about your goals can be reached only through a vehicle of a plan in which we must believe and upon which we must vigorously act as there is no shortcut to success so in case you want to be successful in your events you must be very uh, having a very very strong planning process in place you should ensure that you are actually understanding the goals and objectives you you know what your creatives are supposed to be your planning and your coordinating and uh, you know you are designing in such a manner that finally the end objective is attainable so we are talking about strategic planning what is a strategy yes a strategy is a plan of action to achieve an objective that is usually major comprehensive and long term here all the members of the organization will work together to make the change to actually first come up with a design or make the desired changes to get the goals of the organization to achieve the goals of the organization okay so basically strategy is a plan to achieve what you want to and strategy generally is a longer word okay it is for a long term goal and objective it could include your mission statements your vision statements your it it addresses your critical uh, business issues what are your critical success factors what are you good at it involves your swot analysis the swot analysis as we term it these words may sound very new to you but it's okay this is something which is very important so please do listen carefully and make notes in case even after the session you still have doubts you can always connect back with me uh, my email id will be shared at the end of the session it's anita makaria at gmail dot com i'll be sharing it at the end of the session with all of you as well so here we dive into strategic planning see as i told you that the end objective of any organization is to achieve some goals so the management activity that gives an organization the best chance to achieve their goals and objectives is known as strategic planning so where are we standing now where do you want to go this gap between where you are and where you want to go or what you want to be or what you want to deliver this process or this gap is filled by something called strategic planning that is how are we going to get from here to there okay so in any situation the basic purpose of strategic planning is where do you want to go and how are you going to go there that is a basic explanation for strategic planning now there are various frameworks and methodologies which are involved in strategic planning and management i repeat that this is a very very important part of your um, uh course material because this is not important only for you as in whether be it a corporate be it a, a social event be it a marketing event be it any form of an event planning is your basis for any kind of an execution so please do focus well and please do try to understand and relate well to what is being taught in today's session as i was saying that frameworks and methodologies for strategic planning and management could be of various forms in various organizations and um, as no two events are like one similarly based on what your organizational goals are or what you want to achieve you may have your own frameworks but the basis the basics of this is um, a four point wherein first you analyze or assess or you come up with an understanding of the current and internal and the external environments and you develop on it okay so what do you mean by internal environments and what are your external environments internal apartments are your strengths your capabilities it is about your departments okay when you talk about external environment what could be your external environments yes external environments could include your clients aspirational goals it could um, uh if i have to put it in other words it could involve your vendors okay second point is strategy formulation where high level strategy is developed 
and a basic organizational level strategic plan is documented okay so this is where first you're analyzing and assessing the situations and then you're coming with a basic plan okay in the basic plan you're actually what could be your basic organizational plan what that's your first level of strategies once your strategies are in place you are actually brainstorming on them and then you come up with something called a strategy execution okay where this plan is now translated at an operational levels okay with action items so first was analysis uh, and assessments of the situations or your goals and objectives second is strategy formulations and designings third is your execution strategy execution final point comes your evaluation that is your sustainment your management phase where ongoing refinement and evaluation of performances communications data reporting the culture other strategic management issues may occur here so first you are actually assessing or um, uh, analyzing the external and internal environments you are formulating a strategy at a basic levels you are uh, finally executing the strategy which was first made you are evaluating and uh, understanding what went wrong what went right what works best where can you improve what's the feedback what are the management issues that came up and then you are remodeling yourself again if need be got it what are the steps involved in strategic planning see a vision without a strategy remains an illusion okay now you know you you are dreaming big but if you don't know how to reach there and you don't plan and work accordingly then that just remains a dream right it's not converting into a reality so the basic strategy planning is uh, if i can put it it is a cycle you know you are creating a, a swot analysis we will be coming to what is swot analysis that's your strength weaknesses uh your objectives or your threats okay then you are formulating a strategy you're proposing missions proposing your goals examining your internal issues external issues and then again re-strategize so it is one ongoing circle you must have heard me use the word vision quite a few times today so what exactly is a vision vision is a narration of a company's final objective or aspirations so that acts as a directing principle for an organization it is the part it is that part it is a starting point actually because that is from where that you know a direction is placed to the entire organization and to the departments from where they can actually pick up the next set of activities if you don't have a vision you cannot plan your mission or you cannot uh, plan the next set of activities hence being very clear being very concise being very crisp knowing what you want your vision has to be correct what is a mission people get confused between a vision and a mission so i will be explaining the differences between a vision and a mission in just a couple of minutes but we need to understand what is a mission first the mission in simple terms means a statement or a short narration of what the organization is doing in the present state towards the achievement of the vision so mission actually it sets the framework for the set of activities to be performed by individuals or by units or by departments across the entire in, uh, entity mission guides on how you can achieve your vision now if you want to clearly understand what is a mission and a vision and what are the differences between these two i would like to take you through because you may just wonder right okay i want to grow as a big event planning company that is my mission that is my vision is that your mission also mission is what you're doing for it so the difference between a vision and mission is one vision focuses on the future or on tomorrow and the mission focuses on present that is your today or now 
vision helps in understanding the ultimate goal and objective of an organization whereas a mission helps you to recognize what an organization needs to do to achieve that particular goal vision promotes motivation and inspiration whereas a mission encourages to keep a focus on the current state of affairs that are to be performed vision signifies the company's final destination mission is actually the journey it denotes on how a company will reach out to that particular destination vision will not change so frequently as it is the company's final objective the mission may change uh, taking into account the changing circumstances or when you need to upgrade a particular when something's not working as you know as you wanted it to so maybe you'll just make the small interdepartmental changes or some changes in your strategies so a mission still has scope of changing and adaptabilities okay and vision has a long timeline because that is your final destination mission have shorter timelines and look forward to going step by step now since you know what a vision and what a mission is it's time for doing a short activity you would want to start your own event management company what would be your vision and mission statement okay and the second point of uh, uh, homework for you is you are to help your client say to your talkers to build their vision and mission statement what would be your suggestions to them interesting right so if you have any doubt in coming up with these you can always reach out to me i hope you've made a note of these two activities to be done let's move on to the next topic now now we are sure we have understood what is our vision statement what is our mission statement what are the core values of our company what what is the purpose of being there right now next comes what are why are we doing this what do we want to do okay that is again aiming at your goals and objectives now what do you think is is goal and objective the same or is there any difference a goal is a broad primary desired outcome an objective is something which is measurable step to take to achieve a strategy that can get you to that goal so like how you have a vision and a mission you have a goal and an objective i hope that is clear so um if you look at this particular picture the vision and missions are very clearly set next you have to decide what are your goals okay now i want to become a big event management company that is my vision my mission is i'm going to get today i'm here i'm going to get there in and i'm going to do this 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 to get there for this current year for this current financial year my goals are to be a 50 crore company okay what is what what am i doing about it i am going to set smaller objectives ki you know as a department we need to work on this 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 my sales team has to work my marketing team has to work together my executions have to be very good so that you know i get referrals over referrals and i get evens over evens so that that measurable quantity of that objective that i have i can reach there strategize in such a manner that it gets me to my goal there to achieve any vision or a mission or a goal or an objective you need to be smart okay smart is both i mean it literally that you need to be a smart person when you are on the work field at the same time smart is an acron uh, is also an um, uh, an acronym for being specific s is being specific m is measurable a is attainable r is relevant t is timely okay so what is very important is that you should be able to define your uh, vision uh, statements or your goals and objectives very very clearly with no unclear language or ambiguity who is going to be involved what is to be done what do you want to accomplish where it has to be done 
why am I doing this? What are the constraints that might come across? So you have to specifically define all these questions, okay? You need to have an answer for these and that is when you can actually move forward. When you talk about measurable, see, if you don't know what you're doing, if there's no way that you can actually measure whether you're being successful or not, whether you're being able to deliver or not, there should be some way of measuring this, right? So uh, it, can, it should be able to help you track your progress that you're meeting so far. What are the outcomes that are happening? How much? How many? How will I know whether my goal is being accomplished? How far am I from the goal? What am I planning? Now, there is an A there for SMART. A stands for attainable, achievable goals and objectives. Is this goal reasonably uh, good enough? Is it possible for me to accomplish this? If yes, how am I going to accomplish this? Make sure that the goal is not out of reach. It shouldn't be too high a goal, over ambitious goals or something which is completely low. I mean, you know, you can actually do it, but just to show, just to satisfy your ego that I achieved a goal. Your goals should be as per your standards and what you are able to deliver. Yes, you should always aim a little higher, but don't make it unreasonably high where it is demotivating that, you know, you're not able to achieve it. Because at the end of the day, there are restrictions, right? All of us have limited resources, limited capabilities. So make sure that you are identifying goals which are best in the interest of your organizational values as well. Next is being relevant. Is the goal worthwhile and will it meet your needs? Is it that each goal is consistent with the other goals that you have? Is it, uh, is it properly established? Is your goal properly established and does it fit into your immediate plans or does it fit into your long term plans as well? So hence, it, it just, you know, you, whenever you're planning, whenever you're starting with this kind of a strategy or when you're planning your goals and objectives, you should always be realistic, okay? Your last but the not, not the least is being on time. You know, you should have your timely deliverables. Are your objectives uh, within the time limits? Are you all working on it? Okay, and um, uh, you should have those timelines very, very well defined. If, if it is an urgency, if it is a matter of urgency, are you able to achieve it fast? Do you need prompt actions? What are you doing for the prompt actions? So based on this, be smart in designing of your goals and objectives and in its execution as well. Hope you have no doubts here. Remember the previous slide I had spoken about your SWOT analysis, that is your SWOT. So what do you mean by this? So this is one such type of an analysis, analysis where a company, whether offline or online, conducts strategic planning. And it is very important not only to analyze your own business, but also your competitors' business activities also. And what are the current happenings in the industry? A few of the objectives that we've listed down for you to have a better understanding on why this kind of an analysis is important is because it actually promotes strategic thinking. It helps in designing or in decision making. It, is, uh, it helps you acknowledge the opportunities and threats that you have towards your business. It gives you a better understanding of the positives and the negatives of the business. It helps you organize the factors that work best or the worst for your business. It helps in performing the pre-crisis planning and preventive crisis management as well. So when we are talking about uh, SWOT analysis, we talk about strengths, we talk about weaknesses, we talk about opportunities in your objectives, we talk about the threats. What, are, what about your strengths? Okay, do you, what, are, what are your advantages? What are the advantages that you have? Why should a client come to you? What, what is your USP? That is your unique selling point. What, what is it that you do better than anybody else? What is your unique or the lowest cost of resources that others don't have? What are your strengths according to your clients? Okay, that is what your strengths are 
is all about so you need to first actually understand you know when you why are you better than the others why are you the best or the go to person or the go to agency or to go to company for this particular event once on one hand when we have strengths there are possibilities that we have our own set of weaknesses as well and it is very necessary that you identify your weaknesses because you cannot uh, you should not promote or promise anything which is not in your capacity so what what is it that you can still improve what are the what are your weak points what are the point areas of improvement i generally would not like to use negative words too much so i'd rather i'd rather say that what are your what is your scope of improvement okay you need to identify that and work on that what would be what is it that you know um, you you should be avoiding say i'm not uh, i'm not say if i'm not a techni technical person okay i don't have a very sound technical background okay um i'm not good at layout designing i am good at creating plans or you know the i'm good at creating something um, with flowers and you know maybe i'm good at drapes i'm good at colors but i'm not good with the light and sound so do you think i should be sitting with the light and sound box or should i be focusing on what is my strength yes so it is very necessary that i identify what my weak areas are work on that you should always improvise and strengthen your strengths at the same time you should take care of your weaknesses and try to work on that okay uh what is it that you know uh, what is it that you you like to avoid what you're not good at identify that part of it now when i talk about opportunities what do we mean by opportunities okay what are the what are some kind of events or holidays that you would love to take advantage of you know there might be something which i i've always wanted to try as an we've learned that there are different types of events right um there you there's a huge scope of events once you enter this field this is an ocean in itself so there are so many things that you can do you might have started with a couple of things now what are the other opportunities that you can grasp what according to your strengths okay uh what are the interesting trends that you are aware of uh what are the opportunities for collaborations what are some of the brands that align well with your organizational values okay so you need to identify what are the other opportunities because once you identify the other opportunities there is more scope for you to grow next comes your threats are there many changes in technology is it threatening your position like how i said i'm i'm not a technical person so that there somewhere there's a threat right if there if there is some um, some kind of an event where there where we need to be technically very sound then that becomes a threat to me because a competitor may get an edge over me so what am i going to do about this of course i'm going to upskill myself of course i'm going to get a very strong back end support team who is going to work strongly on it so you know that is one threat i will take care of immediately do you have money problems are you financially is your uh, organization financially very sound to invest more get the re re required resources are you in a position to grow bigger by your own investments who is your competition what are your weakness um, you know are your weaknesses threatening your bit of existence already okay see it is it is always nice to be honest and to accept okay so one area that i always insist rather i'll make it two two areas that i would always insist on a person to work out or to watch out on is what are the weaknesses what are your threats you know what your strengths are you know how to grasp your opportunities if you're only looking at these two but you're forgetting to work on your weaknesses and work on your threats then you know you or no matter how much you're going to work forward that there, there is a scope that you'll get pulled back hence when you are planning when you are in a when you are sitting with your team when you are in the planning process you need to make sure that you have this analysis very well in place as i said this becomes self explanatory right what are the advantages of this uh, swot analysis it helps the organization to analyze whether or not the defined objective is achievable it helps in decision making to have a proper vision and the process becomes more practical with efficient results it helps in deciding the major organizational priorities it helps in building a better strategy in accordance with the status of your organization or the business or the industry per se as well however the limitations that may come across would be 
that it could lead to misinterpretation of your external and internal factors okay or your business surroundings for example focusing on only a single strength like you know you want a cost let's reduce the cost our our forte is that we give the best pricing so you know you'll want to go in for cost reduction but while you're doing this are you actually uh, making the quality go down um, is your product quality suffering because of that so it becomes very important that you actually consider all the factors hence swot is performed to defend the goals and objectives okay and misuse may lead to distraction from the actual barriers hence you need to be very uh, very very careful and keep the organization's objectives above the welfare of the communities okay uh if you keep you need to keep the welfare of the community and the organizational objectives at par so as i was telling about the limitations so what happens you know what happens sometimes is you know your strengths your weaknesses your opportunities your threats may confuse you at times uh just a few example if i have to give you is you know you may have a strong brand name that could be a strength but it could work negative for you as well what are you doing about it are you able to maintain it how good is your material management system okay uh what are your human comp uh, competency skills if i talk about weaknesses uh do you have your are you a high cost structure uh, are you or do you have obsolete or uh, narrow product lines are you working on this if i talk about the opportunities um are you uh, are you uh, exploiting the unfulfilled customers um you know needs or are you expanding your core business businesses are you applying the right r and d and skills you know um are you making use of everything when you talk about the threat possibilities it could be are you um, worried about the increase in labor costs or your domestic competitions what are you doing about your trade barriers what are the trade barriers becoming a threat to you what are the new regulations are you able to be compliant with your new regulations what are the changes in consumer tastes in their behaviors what are the new forms or the new norms of your industries are you able to take care of all these hence what happens is you know many times your swot analysis becomes very circumstantial so you need to sit back and rework on this i would like to just conclude by saying that you know swot analysis is very important because it comes up with huge insights of your own business of your own teams you get to know of your strengths and weaknesses okay and uh, that is when you as a management industry or a business uh, it can help you increase your uh, efficiencies and your uh, organizational effectiveness hence you need to actually be very very careful in this analysis and make a report accordingly and work on that particular report activity time you want to launch a new cell phone in the market please make a swot analysis report on this what are the challenges that as an organization you may face we had spoken about swot analysis we had spoken about being smart so now when you have to launch a new product in the market what is it that you will suggest best to the client just try to work on this in case you have any doubts you can always reach out to me you can write to me at anitamakaria@gmail.com thank you so very much for listening so patiently and i hope this has added value to you all thank you so very much and shubhkamnay for all the days to come